Hey everyone, this is Mark Ryan coming at you with another video. Now, today there was a debate between James White and William Lane Craig on Unbelievable and just want to share my thoughts on it. The The moderator did a phenomenal job. I don't even know his name, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, that's how much I watch Unbelievable, just once every once in a while. Uh, but hey, the, the moderator did a, a great job. Every once in a while you watch debates where people just walk all over the moderator, like especially in political debates and presidential debates. But that wasn't the case with this moderator. He did just a stand-up phenomenal job. I think that both Bill, as, as James White refers to him, I will too, uh, both Bill and James White, I think they both were pleased with uh, with the moderator. I think everyone uh, generally would say, hey, I, overall he did a great job. So everyone wants to know, hey, who won this debate? Well, there was a clear loser in this debate, and it was the live chat section with all their comments. Uh, not much grace there for sure. So point for the moderator, the chat section. Uh, were there even Christians in the chat section, right? It was pretty uh, uh, ungraceful, not, not the best. You know, we could, all, we could all do better there. I could do better in chat sections. That's for sure. Now, before we get started, I want, just want to talk about Molinism. It's one of those theologies. If you can call it a theology, I call it philosophy. It drives me nuts. <laughs> I, I can't stand things that are grounded essentially in philosophy. And William Lane Craig is quoted as talking to students and telling them, hey, if you want to get really good at apologetics, then what do you have to do? Study more philosophy and less theology. And that's that's William Lane Craig kind of in a nutshell. I don't think I'm being unfair to him there, um, but he's more philosoph uh, philosophical minded than uh, theologically minded. And we can see that in the debate in that William Lane Craig is trying to put together like a curriculum for colleges. And it, it's a curriculum on philosophy, theology, apologetics. Well, philosophy's first on that list. Um, well, why? Because <laughs> that's his foundations, philosophy, not theology. It's a, it's a rotten foundation, I would say. And we can hear the, the philosophy mindset come from William Lane Craig from the very onset of the debate. Well, he talks about Uncle Scrooge, right? And he gets visited by the, the three ghosts um, telling him, hey, these are the things that, that can be or would be or will be if, if you don't change kind of thing. A few things that stuck out to me in the debate is where James White says, hey, it's not just Calvinism that micromanages everything. Well, that the same charge can be laid against Molinism for sure. And then Bill's main argument against Calvinism like throughout the debate was the, the determinism thing. And hey, uh, there's this problem of evil. And if Calvinism is true, then God is the author of evil. And for me personally, that, that's a pretty weak argument from William Lane Craig in that uh, William Lane Craig does not believe in the first 11 chapters of Genesis in, in the literal sense. He believes they're mythic. Well, when you get to, to Adam and Eve with William Lane Craig, he believes that there's death before they sinned. If I understand him right, sometimes the guy's smart and sometimes he's talking and I just don't understand him. <laughs> uh, but I, I really think I understood him right. And under his view, there would have to be death before sin. Well, then the problem of evil, I think, is even uh, exponentially worse for William Lane Craig uh, if you dive into the implications of death before sin. But hey, this debate didn't go to Genesis. I'm probably unique in that, hey, I'd rather hear them talk about Genesis 1 through 11 and the book of Revelation. If I could pick a debate between them, uh, it'd be that. And I want to know Bill's view on the atonement. He probably has it out there. I'm not sure. My understanding is that William Lane Craig is trying to like put together and piece together uh, his own like systematic theology of what is philosophically most biblical. Now, there are two quotes in the debate that stood out to me and I wrote them down. The first one is from James White. And he said, hey, if open theism is a hands-off thing, why are there so many hands involved? <laughs> and so open theism creates this uh, this framework. I like to think of it as, hey, the, the, the founder of open theism probably watched a Doctor Strange movie. <laughs> probably watched, was really into those movies before they existed, obviously. 
Um, but, you know, thought, hey, maybe God's kind of like Doctor Strange and he knows what would happen in an unlimited amount of universes and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, James White points to the story of Joseph and God is, um, he's there restraining evil. Later on, he's there hardening hearts in scripture we can see. And so James White's pointing out, hey, this open theist theology, if you want to call it that, philosophy, um, <laughs> for one that's hands off because, hey, God can't violate people's free will. And so in order for him to not do that, he looks into a trillion, bazillion different universes, chooses the best one, and bam, that's what we have. Well, God's still hands on. Uh, and, and so they don't even escape that problem, essentially, is is his point. Um, but I love that quote. I'm going to read it again. If open theism is a hands-off thing, why are there so many hands involved? Um, and as Christians say, God's on his throne and he is actively governing over the affairs of mankind. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that some more too. The, the other quote that stuck out, this one was from William Lane Craig. Uh, he said, if it's evil to make someone do evil, how is that not evil? And of course, I thought James White answered it fine. He answered it well. Hey, God's not holding a gun to anyone's head, forcing people to, to do evil. God's not holding people hostage or making them victims or robots or puppets, forcing people to do evil things. Uh, no, what people do, they, they do of their own choosing. And James White points out that God is actually restraining evil. Uh, that, hey, there'd be a lot more atrocities, a lot more evil uh, occurring in the world if God wasn't actively restraining the evil within mankind's heart. And the last thing I want to point out is that William Lane Craig, he called uh, Molina, the, the Jesuit priest who developed this theology, as like a theological giant. And James White took a, a shot at that because, well, when you look at who that was, uh, he was a Jesuit priest. He rejected Sola Scriptura. And when you reject Sola Scriptura and you you build a philosophy, a framework out of that, hey, it, it's going to be rotten. It's it's not going to be that good. <laughs> and I've never been that fascinated by Molinism, to be honest. It's Philosophy drives me nuts. When I was taking a philosophy class in college, um, I just wanted to bang my head against the desk, <laughs> to be honest, because I'm more like, I, I don't care what those philosophy guys have to say. Like one one verse in scripture is more authoritative than all this other stuff. I, I just really could care, could not care less, to be honest. No, personally, I find open theism much more fascinating, a much more intriguing to study. It's less philosophical. I mean, there's still philosophy in it for sure. Um, but there's more text of scripture that you can actually go into and dive into. And I think it's a little bit less complex than Molinism is for sure. Uh, there's a moment in the debate where William Lane Craig defends himself saying, hey, like I believe in Sola Scriptura. And I would somewhat challenge that in that there, there are times where I, I think um, Bill puts scripture under science and philosophy, especially Genesis 1 through 11. He does not believe in the literal crea creation account well, why? I think part of a be modern science has rejected, he feels like it's rejected and refuted what the Bible clearly says. Um, there's the clarity of the Bible over Genesis 1 through 50. Uh, Genesis 1 through 11, it, it, it's pretty clear. Um, and how would you go to reject that? Well, modern science and philosophy. Uh, so I, I don't feel like he has sola scriptura down down solid down pat that's that's just my opinion though but then again i i think we see it all over again where um he elevates philosophy kind of over scripture to help interpret scripture too that's how you come up with a molinist framework in my opinion uh so i i would reject that william lane craig i mean he professes to believe in sola scriptura yes that's true but in reality in practice I, I don't think that I would give that to him, to be honest. Now, overall, I think it's a pretty fair, pretty cordial debate. I think they left on good terms. I think we could see a follow-up. Hopefully, we do see a follow-up, but hopefully over Genesis and Revelation, I think. Do those two things, <laughs> or the atonement even, because I think Bill's trying to hash that out. 
with his kind of systematic theology that he's putting together. But they, they left on good terms. There were a few times where James White got frustrated because probably because he's dealing with someone who's philosophically minded. Uh, William Lane Craig, he kept his cool like the whole time, I feel. Uh, but beyond that, <laughs> I laughed a few times in that James White would be exegeting uh, scripture like the story of Joseph and just dissecting that story or Ephesians 1. And the moderator would say, oh, hey, you know, William Lane Craig, what's your take on that? And uh, he would respond just over and over again. Well, he would laugh, kind of like I laugh. <laughs> well, that's a really good argument for Molinism. And I hear that from Molinists from time to time. You you uh, do your text and they're like, that's such a great argument for Molinism. Uh, and William Lane Craig did that several times during the debate. <laughs> I thought it was kind of kind of funny that stuck out to me but those are just my thoughts on the the debate uh let me know what you thought of it in the comments below was there a clear winner i don't think so if if someone went to watch the debate as a molinist they went away as a molinist and if someone came as a calvinist they're still a calvinist uh but hey it, it was good and it gave some clarity to some things uh but with that i will see you in the next video